Hi, everybody. All right, so we've got a snow day today, Friday, the 4th of February. We couldn't make it in because of the wintry weather. So I wanted to give you a couple of homework help hints. We are going to talk about precipitation on Monday, and the homework assignment will be pushed back to Wednesday. But still, uh, since there, are, there would only be two days between when you hear some of this material and when the assignment is due, I wanted to give you some hints that can give you maybe uh, a head start on this assignment because I don't think it would be a good idea to delay. So let's first of all talk about this first problem, question one. Um, so what we are given is the depth of precipitation for a two-year, five-minute storm, 15-minute duration of a two-year storm, 60-minute duration of a two-year storm, and then that same information for a hundred-year storm. And from that, from just from the two-year and the hundred-year, we need to be able to extrapolate, I guess rather interpolate, we have to determine the storm of the 5, 10, 25, and 50-year return period. And so just by having the two extremes, we can sort of fill in the data in between. And so I wanted to point out to you uh, what equations you can use to do that filling in this table. And uh, if you have the notes or the book, <clears throat> then um, you will see this slide which talks about the, uh, the way that you can find the 10 minute precipitation depth if you know the 5 minute depth and the 15 minute depth. And then similarly for the 30 minute um, storm duration, you can find the depth of the rainfall that occurs in a 30 minute period by weighting the 15 minute depth and the 60 minute depth. So uh, so with this you can do that uh, to find the 10 and the 30 minute um, storm durations for the two or the hundred year return period. And so then what that would mean on this uh, on this table, if we go back to the assignment, you already have some of the data on this table just from the givens. You know you have the two five, and the 215 and so with that first equation I just showed you you'd be able to find the 210 and then you already had the 15 and the 60 so you're going to use that to fill in the 30 minute and then same thing for the 100 year so then you'd have all of the cells filled for the two year storm and the 100 year storm and then the second part of the interpolation is how to find the 5, 10, 25 and 50 year return period depths once you have the 2 and the 100. And so that is where this table comes in, table 7.2.1, where you can extrapolate the precipitation depth of, let's say, for instance, the five-year storm. Then you'd use this 0.674 as coefficient A for the weighting, and 0.278 as coefficient B, which is going to be multiplied by the 100-year um, storm depth. And so then from that, you'd be able to find the precipitation amount for any of the other years that hadn't yet been filled in in this column. So you could find with the 2 and the 100, you could find the 5-minute uh, precipitation depth, the 10-minute precipitation depth, the 15, and so on. Uh, so on this part, you could, uh, on this first problem, you can set that up with Excel if you prefer. You know, that maybe there's some automation that can be accomplished there, or you can do it by hand, whatever you prefer. Um, so that's question one. Uh, moving on to the second question here. It says that uh, the 100-year, 24-hour storm in Richwood, West Virginia is estimated to have a depth of 5.3 inches. And so that's the total amount of water that falls in a 24-hour storm. And what we want to know is how much of that depth is occurring at what time. So this SCS rainfall distribution, it tells us to take a look at table 7.2.2. So let me pull that up and let's look at that table and see what sort of information we get from it. So here's that table. And what it tells you is for every period, I guess it, it depends that, you know, we have time here. So this would be, if we're going to graph it, uh, this our T column would be the horizontal axis. It's telling us at certain time periods what fraction of the precipitation depth has occurred. So after 24 hours, 100% of the 24 hour depth has occurred. But um, here in Richwood, West Virginia, we have type two. So you'll be using this column. This is a pretty easy problem once you realize it. Um, develop a plot of depth on the y-axis and time on the x-axis for the 24-hour storm. 
So all of West Virginia is in the type 2 zone. And so what that means you're going to do is simply take the precipitation depth that's mentioned in the problem statement. What was it? 5.30 inches. 5.30 inches multiplied by 0 0.022 tells you how much depth has fallen up to two hours in the storm. And then after four hours of the storm, you'd multiply this 0 0.048 by the precipitation depth, 5.3 inches. And so you can see that this is just telling you the temporal distribution, as it's called. Just over time, when is a certain fraction of the rainfall occurring? And uh, we can look at a graphical representation of that. That's this figure here. And so this is kind of graphically representing that in a 24-hour period, when does the rainfall really occur? And this says that the typical storm pattern in a Type 2 location, is Type 2 is the solid line, um, it's showing that... Um, there's a period where this is pretty steep, and that's when the rainfall intensity is the highest, is when this curve is steep, because that means you're getting a lot of depth, which is the vertical component of this figure, with very little time, which is the horizontal component of that figure. All right, so I think enough said about that second problem. You're just essentially typing in, in Excel, since this is asking for a plot, um, you're typing in the... Um, one column will be the time, and that will form your x-axis of the plot. The other column will be this distribution, and then you'd need to make a third column, which is the total storm depth multiplied by this fraction. All right, so hopefully you see what's happening there on question two. Question three is a similar thing. It's saying in Seattle, Washington, the 100-year six-hour storm depth is 2.35 inches. So in addition to those 24-hour storms, there's also a table of what the uh, temporal distribution looks like for a 6-hour storm. So here's the similar data. This is showing the time versus what fraction of the precipitation occurs through that 6-hour uh, storm. And so that's this third column here. Uh, this is what fraction of the time has occurred as a decimal. And this is what fraction of the precipitation depth has occurred as a decimal. So you're multiplying the given depth by that fraction, and it'll tell you how much has fallen at what time. And then these others are kind of just conceptual questions. Use which rainfall distribution type is assigned to Seattle. So we're having to look on this map. You're going to need to figure out where on that map Seattle is. And whether it's type 2, type 1, 1A, type 3, there's different stormfall patterns in the United States depending on what kind of, um, you know, whether it's coastal rainfall from the Gulf, coastal rainfall from the Pacific, um, interior rainfall. So those concept questions, I'll leave you to looking through the, uh, the maps that are described. Okay, last hint I'm going to give you now for problem number four. It says to go to the NOAA Precipitation Frequency Data Server. Let me pull that up and show you what it looks like. Here's the Precipitation Frequency Data Server. And so you can click on the map, and um, we're interested in West Virginia. Let's click on West Virginia, and it'll zoom us in to begin with, just kind of in the West Virginia region. And you can see this red cursor. Uh, we can move it and drop it in certain locations. And so I'm going to drop that, let's just say, on Charleston, right? In the center of Charleston. And we can check the latitude and longitude and elevation if we need to. Um, but when you do that, it's going to uh, use, here at the top, you can choose whether you want to see the precipitation depth or the precipitation intensity. So intensity, remember, has units of length per time, like inches per hour of the storm. Whereas precipitation depth would be just the total depth that has fallen up to a certain time in the storm. So in this uh, assignment, it says to make two different figures, one that's based on intensity, the other that's based on depth. So uh, let's just start with this depth, since that was the default. And uh, the instructions further tell us that we need to leave it on partial duration which is the default here for partial duration. So I've clicked on a location 
and this data table that fills below it is based on the location that I've selected. So what it tells me is, let's just use a 10-year storm as an illustration. A 10-year storm that has a duration of 5 minutes, has a depth of 0.541 inches. And here we can see the units are inches. Uh, and then this is the 90% confidence interval. And, and this is statistically extrapolated data because there's not rain gauges everywhere. And so in part, it's extrapolating based on the location. And it's also extrapolating based on uh, the number of years that we're at the rainfall gauges that this is based on. And so, you know, those layering uncertainties means that we don't know exactly what the 10-year, 5-minute storm is, but we have 90% confidence that it's within this range, and then the given data is in the middle of that range. And so that's what you need to graph, is this, this data that's in bold. So you could select all of this data, and I think we'd be able to paste that into Excel. Let's just give it a shot, if we can paste that data into Excel, because it's certainly going to be a lot simpler if you don't have to uh, manually type that into Excel. But if we could paste it, and we may need to eliminate the 90% confidence interval stuff. Mm, I don't like how that's gone so far since we've got the confidence interval in there. Let's see if maybe we could do it this way. No, that's no better either. Well, rather than copy and paste, I guess I could look down here at the bottom and it gives you the... Uh, gives you the option of downloading the table in CSV. So let's see what that looks like. So if we save that CSV file, that will open up with uh, Excel. That looks way better. All right, that's what we need. So you could, this is that middle data point. Remember the 0.541 for the five minute 10 year storm. And so um, this is asking this problem uh, for you to create two figures. One's an intensity duration frequency curve and the other depth duration frequency. And so um, x-axis, which is going to be time, will be logarithmic scale. And the y-axis, which will be either intensity or depth, would be linear if you're doing the depth and intensity if you were doing the uh, uh, log scale for the intensity. Um, so, you know, maybe this is a uh, 20, 30 minute problem depending on how proficient you are at uh, formatting figures in Excel. And, and I can demonstrate how to set logarithmic on the axis. But I just wanted to, uh, to show you, number one, where you can find the precipitation data frequency server and uh, now here down at the bottom we can get the tabular data uh, so that was pre precipitation depth and if we switch and click intensity now it's just going to give us a different table down below and we can tell that it switched over to intensity because the units rather than being inches now it's inches per hour so you'll notice that the highest intensity is for the shortest duration storm just like we'd expect and then the longer the storm the lower the average intensity during the entirety of that storm. All right, so those are the hints I wanted to share with you. Just a couple of things to get you started on homework number four. I would really encourage you to uh, spend a bit of time either today or over the weekend trying to get a head start on this, and then we'll talk more about precipitation on Monday. And of course, the homework assignment will do, be due on Wednesday uh, because of this class cancellation. All right, that's it. Let me know if you've got questions. Bye.